that the flow of God's power in your life and his ability to work in your life is in your hands alone? Did you know that you have the ability to limit God from functioning in your life, from flowing through you to touching those around you? This is something that a lot of people don't give much thought to in the church today. Over the previous couple of videos, we've been talking about the power of God. We talked about Paul saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We talked about the renewing of our minds, changing our thinking, beginning to you know, spend time looking at the word of God on a daily basis. I want to look at ways that we hinder God from operating in our lives today. Let's begin in Psalm 78. In verse, we'll start in verse 40. It says, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Who limited God? They did. Israel did. This is talking about Israel's time in the wilderness. And we're not going to take time today to read through the whole chapter, but I encourage you to go back and look at this chapter. It was their lack of attention, you know, giving lip service to the word, to him and to his word, to his plan, that limited him from being able to take them into the promised land, from being able to work the way he wanted to work in their lives. If you go up to verse 36, we can see an example of this. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. And I find that to be a very interesting thought. They did flatter him with their mouth. They lied to him with their tongues. This is something that I'd like to think about to, just for us to look at, consider. How often do we go to church and flatter God with our tongues? We give him praise while we're looking around the sanctuary, looking what other people are doing. But really, is our focus on him? Is our heart wholly his? Have we given everything to him? Are we there to give him our all? One thing that I think hinders God from being able to move in our midst today the way we desire is our lack of reverence and attention to him. This is one thing that you see in Israel when they were in the wilderness. You know, they were focused on their needs. When they didn't have meat, they cried out to God for meat. They, they weren't happy with the diet of manna. They weren't happy with this. They weren't happy with that. They were always looking at the negative instead of looking to God and his supply. He supplied the manna they, on a daily basis. I mean, they had bread from heaven manifesting, but still they found something to complain about in that. I've heard people talk about, well, if we just had power God manifesting, then everything would be right. But is that necessarily true? Having the power of God manifesting on a daily basis in a tangible way is wonderful. But we cannot live at that level on a day-to-day -day basis. The Bible says we, have, we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. It doesn't say without walking in the miraculous on a day-by-day -day basis. It says without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith is a daily walk a daily relationship with our Creator. It says that they limited him, they tempted him, they limited him with their unbelief, with their lack of attention, with their lack of reverence for the, his things. But how, often, how much does that describe us today? And I've seen this over the years in different services that I've ministered in, that I've attended. You see people talking um, about everything, you know, I've heard people talk about the weather, I've heard people talk about different things, I've heard people talking while the minister's ministering to people. There's, they're giving mouth service to God, but their hearts are not His. 
I'm not saying these are, are bad people. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying there's a lack of reverence, a lack of revelation of that the Spirit of God is manifesting and moving in our midst. But are we willing to recognize Him? Are we willing to give Him our full attention? And a lot of times we're more focused on our day to day life, on the situations we're experiencing, on our pains, on on our situations than we are on those around us. Sometimes people say, well, okay, they limited him, but that was Old Testament. In Mark chapter 6, starting in verse 1, we see a situation where Jesus went back to his own hometown. And starting in verse 1, it says, He went out thence from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished. From whence hath this man these things? And, and what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? These were his hometown folks. They knew him. They recognized him. They were familiar with him. And it goes on saying, Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Jesus, Judah, just Simon, or not? His sister's here with us, and they were offended at him. This is the hometown boy coming back, preaching, teaching. They were hearing what he was saying, but they knew him. They knew his family. They were familiar with him. They had no respect for the words that he was speaking. In verse 4 says, Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And then in verse 5, notice it says, He could there do no mighty work, save that he's laid his hand upon a few sick folks and healed them. To me, that sounds like he was limited. He was limited by their lack of respect for the anointing upon his life. And yes, there was an anointing on his life. We see that in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. But these people knew him. They were familiar with him. They had no respect for the anointing upon his life. And because of that, he was limited in his ability to flow with the Spirit and the ability to allow the power of God to flow through him. It's, and we see a reason for this in verse 6. It says, He marveled because of their unbelief. But notice it said he went around about their villages teaching. In the last video, we talked about the renewing of the mind. We do that by giving attention to the word. It was unbelief that hindered Jesus from being able to work. But it's interesting when you look at this because when you think of unbelief, there's a lot of tradition, there's a lot of ways to think about it. But notice here, these people were questioning him because they knew him, they knew his family. They were questioning the anointing on his life. They were questioning the things he was teaching. And it said they were not giving him honor. And the account tells us that was a form of unbelief. Their lack of honor, the lack of respect for the things of God, hindered him from being able to work in their lives. And it says that was unbelief, and it was their unbelief that hindered him. So going back to what I was talking about earlier, with people, when we come to service, you know, the Psalms, we saw that they gave him lip service, but their hearts were far from him. When we're in service, songs are playing, we're worshiping. Are we worshiping from our heart? Are we just singing along to keep the beat? Are we giving him respect? In a service, it's different than just individually. If the majority of people are not recognizing the Holy Spirit, they're not focusing in on the things of God, that corporate unbelief will hinder the Spirit of God from moving. Let me give you an example. Years ago, I was ministering in a church, and the night before service, as I was praying, I had, I don't know exactly what the best way to call it, but I had what I call a mini vision of the service the next day. 
I saw the sanctuary. I saw the people sitting there. I There was a song playing. And on the front row, I saw this lady sitting there. saw what she was wearing. And in the vision, I knew that she had asthma. I knew God wanted to heal her. The next day when service came around, I walked out on stage. Everything, the song was the same song that I saw the vision was playing. I saw that lady sitting there on the front row. There was a real sense of his presence, real anointing upon the service. I basically started to do what I saw in the vision. And when it came time, I started moving towards her. But all of a sudden, the anointing lifted. It was tangible. It was noticeable. I could sense that the Spirit of God was grieved, and that's something we'll talk about and look at. Did you know that you can actually grieve or hurt or sadden the Holy Spirit with your lack of reverence and respect for His presence in the service? We're not talking about blaspheming Him, but we're talking about grieving Him. You can hurt for lack of better words, you can hurt the Holy Spirit's feelings by your lack of recognition for his presence. Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. When we come together as a corporate body in our services, the Holy Spirit dwelling within each one of us, he is there, he's moving, but he desires to do so much more, but we limit him by our unbelief, by our lack of reverence, by our lack of respect. So the anointing lifted. I could sense the Holy Spirit was hurt by something that had happened in service. I stopped, I closed my eyes, I began to pray, ask, inquire what had happened. And that still small voice within, I felt him prompting me to look towards the back of the sanctuary. I'm not saying I heard an audible voice, but I just felt him prompt me to look at the back of the sanctuary. I looked at the back. Two people were standing there talking. I don't. I couldn't hear their conversation. I didn't know what they were talking about. But it was obvious it had nothing to do with what was going in service. Am I saying they were the only two people talking, or they were just the two that he pointed out to me? It was their lack of reverence, respect, that had hurt him and caused the anointing to lift. Now, granted, in that service, there's a very heavy, tangible anointing, more so than in a lot of services I've experienced. But even in, you know, your regular Sunday morning church service, the anointing's there, the presence is there, the Holy Spirit wants to do more. But how much respect are we giving to him? As I'm sharing this, thinking about, you know, oftentimes it's not just the congregation, but it's we in the ministry focused on, you know, time. We're focused on meeting schedules. Television ministry is wonderful. It's been a real blessing to the church. It's given us opportunity to reach out, to touch in ways that we could not have, but at the same time, I believe it also, in a, in a sense, I'm trying to think of a better word here, but in a sense is a curse because we are so focused on having everything at the right prompts, the right timings, that we're limiting God because we're more focused on meeting the television schedule than giving the Holy Spirit freedom to move. So in this one church that I'm thinking about, a couple years ago, the pastor, he'd been praying about revival, praying about creating an atmosphere for the Spirit of God to move in a much greater measure than they'd seen in our church. And the Holy Spirit led him to have the staff take the clocks off the wall because they had a clock on the back. Just like most churches, when you look at the back, you know, the back wall, there was a clock on the back. And the Spirit of God just prompted him to take that off. So he did. But it's also a ministry that's on television. 
So they took the clock off the back of the wall, the way the Holy Spirit had asked them to do, and the, created the Holy Spirit moves there, there's miracles, there's things happening there. But it always seems like there's more that's not happening that he would like to do. It's a ministry we follow. I'm not criticizing or looking at it. I'm just, for our discussion, I'm just asking you to think about this, looking at it, wondering. So they took the clocks off the wall, but because of the television schedule, they do have floor managers who will give promptings to the pastor and the staff to help them keep everything in time. They did take the clock off the wall, they did obey, but they're still focused on time because they have to meet the schedules. You see, when you're moving with the Spirit of God, we limit Him often in our services through our unbelief because we're not giving respect, reverence, honor to Him. And so we have to pull back. We don't see Him manifest as He wants. And then we have to respond just as Jesus did in Mark chapter 6 to their unbelief by teaching. You see, it doesn't matter how deep of a message the Spirit of God gives you, the revelation is coming out with the teaching. If people aren't taking what they're hearing, if we're not taking what we hear, if we're not receiving it, giving respect, reverence, and honor to that message, you know, going back, maybe re-listening to it before we get to the next service, <clears throat> picking apart, pulling up the verses, looking them up, giving it respect and reverence, it's not going to change our thinking. It's not going to transform us the way the Holy Spirit desires it to. Moving in the things of the Spirit, moving in the power of God, is going to require us to develop a higher level of reverence and respect for the Holy Spirit. Flowing in the Holy Spirit, experiencing His presence and service, is not just about having goosebumps. I've seen the deep moves of the Spirit occur just during a teaching but if you're not looking for him, if you're not expecting him, and that's something we'll talk about in the next, in probably the next videos, our expectation. If we're just going in hoping they have it, just receiving whatever, you know, kind of whatever will be what it will be, we have to go in expecting the Spirit of God to move, expecting to receive from him giving him honor, respect, and reverence. Because otherwise what we're doing is we're limiting him, keeping him from moving in our lives the way he wants to. In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul talked about that he prayed for his readers. He prayed for the Ephesian church that the eyes of their understanding would be opened, that they would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. A couple of videos ago we talked about Paul saying I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. And I said, you know, we do have a printed book. It consists of 66 individual books with printing on a page. There are scholars who can quote whole chapters, but they don't have the power of God in their life. It's not enough just to have the printed word. It's not enough just to hear a message. We have to take it. We have to meditate, ponder upon it, allow it to change our thinking, to get into our souls, to begin to renew our thinking, to think the way he thinks. And as we do this on a daily basis, giving him reverence, we'll find ourselves taking the limits off of him. We'll, we'll start developing that revelation of him. But it all begins with moving from just giving lip service to recognizing the Spirit's presence in our life on a daily basis. God has a plan for you. He desires to do so much more in your life than any of us can imagine. But as Paul said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it is up to us to prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Our time is up today. But I encourage you, start thinking about these things. Start taking the messages you hear more seriously. Maybe get a CD, maybe get a DVD, or if it's online, listen to it again. Start 
praying that prayer that Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 17 through the end of the chapter, pray in the first person before you listen to a message. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give unto me a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of my understanding might be opened. Be willing to take time with the Holy Spirit. Stop putting him in a box. Mm -hmm.